Hello class! Today you are going to do lab number 5, the carbon cycle. To introduce you to the topic, let's talk about terminology first. The carbon cycle is one of the matter cycles. It means that due to natural processes, elements are constantly moving in various forms between different components of the environment. Learning about environmental cycles, it's important to understand concepts of sources and sinks. Sources are parts of the environment that can release matter in a cycle. For example, ocean can release water vapor into the atmosphere. Sinks, in contrast, are the parts of the environment that can absorb matter in a cycle. For example, plants can absorb carbon from the atmosphere. Carbon is a major component of all organic compounds, thus all the living beings on Earth. In the atmosphere, carbon exists in the form of gas, carbon dioxide or methane. Carbon is constantly moving between different spheres – hydrosphere, biosphere, lithosphere or atmosphere. Let's look at that movement in detail. This picture is a schematic representation of the Earth's carbon cycle in 2010. The arrows directed down show the sinks or absorption of carbon, and arrows directed up indicate sources that release carbon to the atmosphere. Take a look at the right side of the picture. The Earth's oceans absorb 92 petagrams of CO2 and released back 90 petagrams, so they added to the atmosphere less than they absorbed. You can see that 2 petagrams of carbon was stored in the form of ocean sediments. Now then you know about sources and sinks, can you guess how people affect the carbon cycle? Next video will help you to figure it out. The carbon crisis in 90 seconds. This is a banana. This is a chunk of coal. The banana is sweet and delicious and fun to eat. The coal is well, none of those things. But they are much more alike than they seem. Both were made by plants and store energy from the sun and carbon gas from the air around us. When you eat the banana, you use the energy stored in the banana to run and jump and you release carbon gas back into the air around you. Now, carbon in the banana is young, fast carbon. Just weeks ago, the banana was carbon gas in the air. And hours after you eat it, you breathe out the same carbon back into the air. When we burn coal on power plants, we use the energy stored in the coal to generate electricity that powers our homes and factories, and we release carbon gas back into the air around us. However, the carbon in the coal is old, slow carbon. Plants took the coal carbon out of the air hundreds of millions of years ago. That carbon has been locked up ever since, and would stay locked up if people hadn't dug up the coal and burned it. So now, by burning coal and oil, people are adding lots and lots of old carbon to the atmosphere, faster than plants in the oceans can take it out. In the video, they talk about carbon gas. Do you know what they mean by this? They talk about CO2, a gas form of carbon in the atmosphere. And by that old slow carbon, they mean fossil fuels. Oil, coal and natural gas are made of plants that lived and died millions of years ago. And by burning huge amounts of fossil fuels in decades, people are affecting the carbon cycle adding more and more carbon into the atmosphere. You will learn more about this during your lab. And now let me walk you through your lab and show some tools you need to use. In the various sections of your lab, you need to open Google Earth documents. Let's look at the section number 7 first, at the CO2 concentrations in 2010. This animation shows you the change in concentrations, but it's too fast, so let's make it slower. 
Now it's going to be much slower, but you cannot see whole globe now. Let's move it up. But what if you are lost and your question asks you to compare northern and southern hemisphere? To do that, you need to go to View menu and add grid. Now you can see equator, Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. Now then you know about the main concepts and tools of your lab, continue learning and by the end of your lab make sure to find answers for three big questions. How can carbon be transferred between the atmosphere and other Earth spheres? How can you describe the changes in the anthropogenic emissions of CO2 and also the changes in uptake of CO2? How that uptake of CO2 affected the oceans and terrestrial biosphere? Have fun learning! See you next lab!